Honeydew. Textbook in English for Class 8. Page 36. Unit 3. Glimpses of the Past. Before you read. Here are some pictorial glimpses of the history of our country from 1757 to 1857. These pictures and speech bubbles will help clarify your understanding of the conditions that led to the event known as the First War of Independence in 1857. 1. The Martyrs At a Function in Delhi O oh, my countrymen, let your eyes fill with tears as you recall the sacrifices of India's martyrs. Page 37 2. The Company's Conquests From 1757 to 1849 With its superior weapons, the British East India Company was extending its power in 18th century India. Here is a picture of India in 1765. We can see the Indian princes and we can see the British territory marked in pink. Indian princes were short-sighted. Here's a scene from a court. That upstart Rajaba call the English merchants. They will help me to defeat him. The people had no peace due to such constant fights. The rivalries helped the East India Company and it could easily subdue Indian princes one by one. A far-seeing ruler like the brave Tipu of Mysore fought the British till he died fighting. How did Indians react to these conquests? Here's a typical everyday conversation. Thank God there is peace in the country now. No more wars and no looting by tugs. It is God who sent the British. Our destiny is linked with them. The white man has killed or dethroned our kings. Some kings were not good. But after all, they were of this land. Now we have become slaves of foreigners. Page 38 3. British Rule From 1765 to 1836 Religious leaders preached ideas like untouchability and child marriage. Anyone who crosses the seas loses his religion. All the misery in the world is due to women. The truth was that Indians had lost self-respect. The British scorned them. The natives are unworthy of trust, incapable of honesty. True, Your Honour, but, but I am honest. Being merchants, the British wanted quick profits. Their heavy taxes forced farmers to abandon their fields. You are still in areas. If you don't pay next week, I will send you to jail. <laughs> but your men are taking all my crop. Still, the British invented other methods which gave them more profits. The goods manufactured in England should not have any import duty when brought into India. Hmm, a good idea. The East India Company's laws began to cripple Indian industries. Inevitably, famines followed. Between 1822 and 1836, 15 lakh Indians died of starvation. The British policies ruined the expert artisans and their business. 
page 39. 4. Ram Mohan Roy from 1772 to 1833. Ram Mohan Roy, a learned man from Bengal, understood what was wrong with the country. Let us not despise ourselves. Our ancient culture is great, and we are capable of greater achievements. We must first reform our society. Superstitions have been ruining us. He told his wife Uma, Cows are of different colours, but the colour of their milk is the same. Different teachers have different opinions, but the essence of every religion is the same. He was attracted by science and modern knowledge. Knowledge should be practical and scientific. He started newspapers, but the suspicious British stopped them in 1823. He crossed the seas and went to England to see what made the British powerful. There he told them, We accept you as rulers, and you must accept us as subjects. But you must remember the responsibility a ruler owes to his subjects. Page 40. 5. Oppression from 1765 to 1835. But the British continued to oppress Indians. In 1818, they had passed Regulation 3. Under it, an Indian could be jailed without trial in a court. All the time, British officers in India drew big salaries and also made fortunes in private business. By 1829, Britain was exporting British goods worth 7 crore rupees to India. The British prospered on the company's loot, while Indian industries began to die. Governor General Bentinck reported back home, The bones of cotton weavers are bleaching the plains of India. Page 41 6. Dissatisfaction from 1835 to 1856 Education in India was in Persian and Sanskrit. In 1835, an Englishman named Macaulay suggested a change. We should teach the natives through the English language. Hmm, I agree. English education produced clerks to whom the British gave petty jobs under them. Incidentally, it also produced a new generation of intellectuals. We must educate our brothers and try to improve their material conditions. For that, we must convey our grievances to the British Parliament. By 1856, the British had conquered the whole of India. They cared little about the needs of Indians. Here's a typical village conversation. Our kings have become puppets and we have lost our old jobs. And lands. They are converting our brothers. You only talk. Do something to drive them out. Page 42 7. The Sparks From 1855 to 1857 Taxes continued to ruin the peasants. In Bengal, the Santhals, who had lost their lands under new land rules, became desperate. In 1855, they rose in rebellion and massacred Europeans and their supporters alike. Discontent was brewing in the East India Company's army too. The white soldier gets huge pay, mansions to live in, servants. 
while we get a pittance and slow promotions. The young Greys asks us to cross the sea, which is against our religion. Who is the topi wala to abolish our age-old customs? We must drive out the young Greys. Sipoy Mangal Pandey attacked the adjutant of his regiment and was executed. Thousands of other Sipoys revolted. They were stripped of their uniforms, humiliated and put in irons. Few Englishmen had cared to understand Indian customs or the people's mind. There were lots of talks going among the people. Oh, proud Brahmin soldiers, do you know that the grease on the bullet you have to bite is made from the fat of cows and pigs? What? The white man has deceived us too. Soon, chapatis were sent from village to village to tell the people that their emperor would want their services. Yes, all my village men will be ready. Similarly, lotus flowers circulated among Indian soldiers. Death to the foreigner! The masses gave all help and shelter to the patriots. Page 43 8. Revolt 1857 Then there was a violent outbreak at Meerut. The Sepoys marched to Delhi. Long live our Emperor Bahadur Shah! The rebellion spread wider. Many landlords had lost their lands because of the British policies and they were sore. The white man's rule must end. Yes, we will help you. Page 44 9. The Fight for Freedom 1857 Many former rulers like Begum Hazrat Mahal of Lucknow were bitter. The white man has taken away my kingdom. They joined the upsurge against the foreigner. Popular leaders like Malvi Ahmadullah of Faisabad told the people, Rise, brothers, rise! The young Rays is ruining our land. The people rose everywhere, in Bareilly, Kanpur and Allahabad. Azimullah Khan told Tatya Tope, we should have Peshwa Nana Sahib as our leader in this war of independence. The patriots pounced upon the British and fought pitched battles all over North India. Eighty-year-old Kumar Singh of Bihar received a bullet in his wrist. Mother Ganga, this is my last offering to you. From Our Freedom Movement by S. D. Savant Page 45 Comprehension Check 1. Look at picture 1 and recall the opening lines of the original song in Hindi. Who is the singer? Who else do you see in this picture? 2. In picture 2, what do you understand by the company's Superior weapons. 3. Who is an artisan? Why do you think the artisans suffered? See picture 3. 4. Which picture, according to you, reveals the first sparks of the fire of revolt? Working with the text. Answer the following questions. 1. Do you think the Indian princes were short-sighted in their approach to the events of 1757? 2. How did the East India Company subdue the Indian princes? 3. Quote the words used by Ram Mohan Roy to say that every religion teaches the same principles. 4. 
in what ways did the British officers exploit Indians? 5. Name these people. 1. The ruler who fought pitched battles against the British and died fighting. 2. The person who wanted to reform the society. 3. The person who recommended the introduction of English education in India. 4. Two popular leaders who led the revolt. Choices may vary. 6. Mention the following. 1. Two examples of social practices prevailing then. 2. Two oppressive policies of the British. 3. Two ways in which common people suffered. 4. Four reasons for the discontent that led to the 1857 War of Independence. Working with language. In comics, what the characters speak is put in bubbles. This is direct narration. When we report what the characters speak, we use the method of indirect narration. Page 46. Study these examples. First farmer. Why are your men taking away the entire crop? Second farmer. Your men have taken away everything. Officer. You are still in areas. If you don't pay tax next week, I'll send you to jail. The first farmer asked the officer why his men were taking away the entire crop. The second farmer said that their men had taken away everything. The officer replied that they were still in arrears and warned them that if they did not pay tax the following week, he, that is the officer, would send them, that is the farmers, to jail. 1. Change the following sentences into indirect speech. 1. First man, we must educate our brothers. Second man, and try to improve their material conditions. Third man, for that we must convey our grievances to the British Parliament. The first man said that, dash. The second man added that, dash. The third man suggested that, dash. 2. First soldier, the white soldier gets huge pay, mansions and servants. Second soldier, we get a pittance and slow promotions. Third soldier, who are the British to abolish our customs? The first soldier said that, dash. The second soldier remarked that, dash. The third soldier asked, dash. Speaking and writing. 1. Play act the role of farmers who have grievances against the policies of the government. Rewrite their speech bubbles in dialogue form first. Page 47. 2. Look at the pictures. Here we see a picture where Fox accidentally falls into a well. Here is a picture where she's saying, How do I get out of here? And here's a picture where a goat is asking her, Hello, is this water sweet? Page 48. Here's a picture in which the fox replies, Too sweet, I've had so much. I might faint. Here's a picture where the goat says, Let me taste it. Here's a picture where the fox tells the goat, Thanks for the help. Come out when you can. And here's a picture where the goat is thinking to herself, My mother used to say, Be careful how you take the advice of people you don't know. 1. Ask one another questions about the pictures. Where is the fox? What is the fox thinking? What does she want to know? What happens next? Where is the fox now? How did it happen? Who is the visitor? 
What is the fox's reply? Where is the goat? What is the goat thinking? 2. Write the story in your own words. Give it a title. Here's a space for you. Page 49. Read the following news item. History becomes fun at this school. Mumbai. Students in the sixth grade of a certain school in Navi, Mumbai, love their history lessons thanks to a novel teaching aid. It is not surprising given the fact that their study material includes comic books and they use their textbooks for reference to put things into perspective. Besides, students are encouraged to tap other sources of information as well. During history classes, students pore over comic strips of historical periods, enact characters of emperors and tyrants, and have animated discussions on the subject. History has become fun. In the class, students are asked to read the comic strip aloud, after which they break up into groups of four, discuss what they have heard, and write a summary. Each group leader reads his group's summary aloud, and the whole class jumps into discussion and debate, adding points, disagreeing, and qualifying points of view. A sixth grade student says, It's a lot of fun because everyone gets a chance to express themselves and the summary takes everyone's ideas into account. According to the school principal, the comic strip format and visuals appeal to students. A historian feels that using comics in schools is a great idea. Comics and acting help students understand what characters in the story are actually thinking. Adapted from The Times of India, New Delhi, October 2007 Based on this news item, write a paragraph on what you think about this new method of teaching history. 4. Find the chapters in your history book that correspond to the episodes and events described in this comic. Note how the information contained in a few chapters of history has been condensed to a few pages with the help of pictures and speech bubbles. 5. Create a comic of your own using this story. Once the sun and the wind began to quarrel, each one saying that he was stronger than the other. At last they decided to test each other's strength. A man with a cloak around his shoulders was passing by. The wind boasted, Using my strength, I can make that man take off the cloak. The sun agreed. The wind blew hard. The man felt so cold that he clasped his cloak round his body as tightly as possible. Now it was the turn of the sun, which shone very hot indeed. The man felt so hot that he at once removed the cloak from his body. Seeing the man taking off the cloak, the wind conceded defeat. Honey Dew You were just listening to this audiobook. Production assistants Minakshi Kugreti and Tanu Gupta Recorded by Batilang Lingdo Technical assistants Vikas Sangwan and Soumya Malik Produced by Ajit Horo and presented to you by CIET and CERT, New Delhi, India.